Doctor, thank you so much for being with us. I know you were just treating other patients, so we appreciate you taking the time to speak to us. And we have very important questions for you, namely, talk to us about the severity of the cases you are seeing. How sick are the patients you are seeing who do have this new variant? Uh, good um, good evening or good afternoon, but at, at South Africa time, it's now afternoon. Um, so, yeah, it's a very good question. So, we, you need, the, or, or the public needs to understand what we currently are seeing. It's very early days, and um, it's now more or less, uh, I, I call it day th uh, four t uh, 13, which since, uh, you know, we have made the, the diagnosis of these variant, new variant that's going around. So if you look at the severity, and, and especially in the beginning of any pan uh, wave, uh, it's normally not that severe. It's normally the, the younger people that get infected. And then f from there on, it will spread and go further. So hopefully, we can keep the clinical picture as it is. Um, if we say patients are not, um, they are moderate um, uh, uh, um, ill, they're not severely ill. Uh, in, I'm, an, I'm also part of a group of about eight doctors, and only two, uh, some of my colleagues, only two patients at, that admitted the past 24 hours. I'm not sure about that, those patients' symptoms. But the majority of what we are, are presenting to primary healthcare practitioners are extremely mild cases, so mild to moderate. And um, so, so these patients uh, is, means they don't need to be hospitalized for now. And we... And, and we try to get the message out there to the world to say, listen, we're not saying this is not going to be a, a, a disease going forward that's going to uh, cause uh, a severe disease. It will cause severe disease. But if we can get this disease, if this disease can cause to more than the majority of people mild symptoms, easily treatable at home, no need for admission, that's a first price. But in, for, for us to tell this to the world, we need to tell you what the symptoms are so that the people can understand if I feel a bit fatigued for a day or two, something, not the fatigue that you use. This is a different type of fatigue with a bit of a scratchy throat and, and a bit of a body ache and pain and, and, and you know, you know um, with, a, with a headache. We call it normally malaise. So I don't feel generally well. Um, go and see your doctor. And then we need to tell the doctors, you're not going to see a very sick patient sitting in front of you. Test the patient. Mm -hmm. So if you can test and trace, and we can get the patients to understand that it's mild symptoms for now, but go and see a healthcare facility. Go and, go and get yourself uh, checked out. If you can get that message out to the world, it means that we would most probably going forward have less severe cases, less people going too late to the doctors. And that's, we, we, that no system can afford that. Not South Africa, not um, the mm -hmm. United States. No one can afford that. Let me just reiterate, so, if, if I can, doctor, if I just jump in here, <clears throat> just to reiterate one point here so people hear it clearly. Now this could change. I understand it's the early stages, but right now the patients you're seeing with this new variant, you're dealing with very mild to moderate symptoms. You are seeing no or very little severe disease, correct? Yes. Yes. Um, have you treated patients who have been vaccinated and now we're coming yes, in with I the new have. variant? And what are you seeing yes. there? Same picture. Interesting enough, with the moderate, uh, the, the mild, what we call mild, you know, uh, um, uh, symptoms, uh, that the patients that has been vaccinated so far, I have no complication. They are, you know, it is as if it's, I don't want to use the word self-limiting, but um, minimum conservative measurements that they needed, and they feel fine. It, it seems to me um, it's about the, the first two days before they come and see the doctor, then it's about another three, four days, and they're out of it. Um, and so, so um, the, the, the nice thing is if you pick it up, if you might make the diagnosis and you take the patient out and get them to self-isolate and the rest of the family to, 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 to quarantine, you will also spread less. But yes, I have seen um, vaccinated people and not really very sick.
That might change going forward. As we say, this is early days. No, uh, I, and this I, is maybe what makes us hopeful. I do understand this, these are early stages, but I also think it's important that people know what you are seeing. You are seeing people who have been infected or vaccinated, and they're just not very sick, which is exactly what you hope for with the vaccine yes. in general. We don't know over the next two weeks as these tests come back if maybe, maybe the Omicron will find ways to evade the vaccine. But as of now, it does seem to be offering some protection. That does seem to be key. So based on what you're telling me, with mild to moderate cases, with the vaccinated people who have it, with very mild cases, what's your assessment of how the world has reacted to the news coming out of South Africa uh, about the Omicron variant? I think it was an overreaction. I, I do understand that there's a lot of mutation in this virus. I do understand that it might be much more fast spreading than um, the Delta variant. But if you look, you know, I, I think what one needs to do, there's, there's two types of, um, and, and people who are medical uh, in the medical field will maybe understand better what I'm trying to say here. So you get two types. You get the scientists, and we need the scientists. And it's important that we get the input from the scientists. But while the scientists wait and are busy doing their, um, their work in the background, unfortunately, the patients doesn't wait. The patients comes in. And you need, to, you need to alert your doctors and say, listen, there's something happening. There's something going on. Look at it. Look, see what you can do. So, so you know, and, and then telling the world there's something out there and then being slammed by getting um, these, uh, uh, we call it the knee-jerk reaction of closing borders and everyone and people say, yes, but I'm trying to protect my people. So, so then I, the question would be, how do you know it's not in your country yet? How do you know that a lot of those infections that you are currently seeing that is severe, how do you know it's not maybe related to the Omicron? How do you know? And how do the doctors know if they're not aware that the patient sitting in front of them with a bit of a scratchy throat and said, oh, you know, don't feel quite well, doctor, bit of a, bit of a flu, that's what they would normally call it. Um, I'm not feel, but it's not too bad. And then the doctor would just prescribe some painkillers not testing because they're not thinking that this might be Omicron. And, and, and I think if for South Africa to spread the message out there and then being slammed, um, that doesn't make sense because it's other people's lives as well. You know, it's, it's a huge impact. It's a huge impact on the economy of South Africa. It's a huge impact to the people that want to come and visit family. It's a huge impact from South Africans that want to go and visit family and friends during the festive season. I just think, you know, there's other ways to do this. And again, I want to reiterate, as you have many times, it's early and we still have much to learn. But the epidemiology, when we're talking about the history of pandemics or viruses, there has been a tendency for mutations toward the more mild. There have been viruses, and, and there's scientific reasons for it, why they, when they do mutate, they mutate to becoming more mild and you say it's possible that if that's what's going to happen with Omicron, that it may contribute to herd immunity. How would that work? Well, I would be happy if that, if, if that would be the case, but only time will tell us. And, and hopefully that would, uh, you know, with this fast spreading of the virus, with people being vaccinated, hopefully um, this would be um, something that we can just pray for going forward. And it's not off the cards. It's not to say it's not going to happen. But again, the, you know, the 30 plus mutations are very worrisome to our scientists. Um, actually, they don't really want us to say that this is mild at this stage, mm. but it is what we see. Um, I, we cannot go out there and advise doctors and people and say, listen, wait for the symptoms to come. You need to know what the symptoms is while we wait for, for to see what, how this virus is going to behave. Fatigue, scratchy throat, look for them. Over the next two weeks, what's the biggest question you want answered? I would like to see over the next two weeks, um, the biggest question would be, um, is it going to give us more severe disease? What is it going to do to the elderly that's unvaccinated? or people with comorbidities unvaccinated. That would be interesting to see what it's going to do. 
And then the second thing that is important, um, we need the data to see how many vaccinated people got severe in, uh, infections and breakthrough infections. And then the third last one would be how many people previously had uh, COVID-19, whether it's beta or delta, and get reinfected. And then again, is it mild or is it moderate, uh, or mild or severe to be, uh, in, to be admitted? Uh, from, from at the clinical perspective, for us, that is important. Um, does it really matter for me sit, when a patient sits in front of me, whether he has got 30 mutations or not? Um, you know, I still need to treat him. Whether he's got two mutations, 30 mutations, I still need to make sure that I do the, what is in the best interest of this patient. So from a clinician's point of view, we need to understand what do we give, how do we treat, how do we pick it up, and what is the outcomes.